Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to explore how you write a perfect mark response for part 2 of paper 2, section B, of the AQAA English Literature A2 qualification. Now, previous videos have already gone through the overview of the qualification, how the mark scheme breaks down, how you should plan your response. Let's now look at how we construct that answer. So here's a question. Coping in war comes in many different forms. So there's the argument perspective that you have to work with. Compare the significance of suffering in two other texts you have studied. So obviously looking at coping here and how that's suffering. Remember to include in your answer reference to how meanings are shaped in the text you are comparing. There's the reference to A2, AO2 obviously. You must use a drama text written post 2000. So here's a, you know, so this option here suggests you should be using My Boy Jack. I'm not using that section today, but obviously I'm using exactly the same method and one poetry text in your response. So again, you can see how you're being asked to look at a variety of different texts here. Now, I'm using two drama texts to support my answer, but you can see how the question is worded. You need to make sure, obviously, you are focused fully on answering that question. How do I write the response? So think about where your argument is, highlight the two texts that you're studying and how far they agree or disagree with one another. You may want to begin to bring a couple of minor contextual points maybe, but not necessarily, but make sure your argument is nice and sophisticated and clear from the outset. Then our main body, obviously this is where you achieve the majority of your marks. What are your points of argument? What's your evidence and analysis to prove that point of argument is correct? Make the link with your other text as well. There's only there's not a lot of marks for comparison here, so obviously you're making sure that your analysis is the key part, and obviously you're using the comparison to support your arguments. Then finally, your conclusion, refer back to your argument, making sure it's clear why you are correct once more. You may want to evaluate which you felt was more effective. You may also want to state which component you felt was the most important from each text and why that was. There's a the question again. And here's our introduction. Both the characters, uh, May in Whedon's The Actress and Powers and Stanhope in Sheriff's Journey's End, are affected deeply by war and have to cope with changes because of it. They both cope to a certain extent, though Stanhope's methods are deeply flawed and do not allow him to cope fully with the war's events, while May appears to be able to move on solidly from the events of the war. This contrast highlights the difference between the reactions to the war on the home and the war fronts. So there's a little bit of evaluation. There's my argument nice and clearly stated. Let's move into what our main paragraph should look like. Again, you'll be having two, three, four. There we go. The way in which these two characters cope with the war is different. Stanhope uses escapism to handle war, whilst May adjusts by blaming herself and society. However, it's clear that May adjusts better to the events of the war because she is able to move on, while Stanhope is not able to recover. The character May loses Tom and blames herself, saying, I shouldn't have killed him. Using a transitive verb, killed, where the subject becomes the agent of action, Wynne is suggesting that May, the subject, believes she is responsible for his death and is using this blame as an attempt to cope with war. From a psychological perspective, guilt is one of the five stages of grief, suggesting she is attempting to deal with his loss. Both of the characters experience these stages. May experiences guilt and another stage, anger. He did. He died a slave upon Tom's death, becoming isolated when Eva leaves and then accepting and returning to normality at the end. Oh, those are good onions. Now, while Stanhope goes through guilt over Riley's letter, anger at Hibbert and Riley, and is isolated by the deaths of everyone at the end. However, the fact that May reaches acceptance and Stanhope does not suggests that May copes fully with war, unlike Stanhope. Point of argument being made, evidence being explored here, looking at uh, language analysis and structure, obviously looking at plots. It is interesting that May says upon Tom's death he died a slave, an exclamatory sentence suggesting a deep anger at society for his death. This is because of the use of the derogatory Lexus slave suggests that May views Tom as a puppet of the government, a common Marxist view of the war. However, because of May's capitalist ideology in the rest of the play, it seems likely that May is instead using this as another coping mechanism, placing the blame for Tom's death on the government. By doing this, May is directly confronting them about the war in order to cope with it. This differs to Stanhope. May is written as someone who needs confrontation to cope. Stanhope uses escapism from such confrontations to cope himself, including from the confrontation that is the First World War. Stanhope states that, Do you ever feel you're the only thing in the world? Then the world begins going away. The use of the adjective only suggests a complete isolation from others psychologically as an attempt to cope with the possible loss of others. From a Freudian perspective, Stanhope appears to use escapism as a defence mechanism against the war. 
However, the fragmented nature of the syntax using hyphens in this scene suggests the coping mechanism is failing, as they appear to represent the breakdown of his mind. It's a really lovely use of language analysis, but also structure analysis as well. You'd go on to produce two, three more points. In conclusion, May copes better with Warden Stanhope, who loses his identity through it. May proposes her and changes little because of the war. While prospers rather, while Stanhope changes completely, using, losing his name and his humanity and distancing himself. Partially, this is because of the differences between their two respective fronts, but fundamentally, this is because of the difference in the abilities of their characters to cope with such situations well and how they've psychologically coped before the war. So, well done. Thank you. Make sure you're revising.